ഹബീബുസ്ലാമുസ്ലാമുസ്ലാമുസ്ലാമുസ്ലാമുസ്ലാമുസ്ലാമുസ്ലാമുസ്ലാമുസ്ലാമുസ്ലാമുസ്ല
جب بھڑکے بدن بدن محبوب کی ٹھنڈی ہوا کا ساتھ باہر آئے پیاس سے ساحل کو فرش ہے جو دو دو عطا کا ساتھ ہو ربنا یا ربنا ربنا یا ربنا ربنا یا ربنا ربنا یا ربنا یا الہی نام آئے اعمال جب کھلتے لگے یا الہی نام آئے اعمال جب کھلتے لگے عیب پوش خلق سارے خطا کا ساتھ وہ ربنا یا ربنا ربنا یا ربنا 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 یا ربنا یا الہی جو دعا نیک ہم تجھ سے کریں یا الہی جو دعا نیک ہم تجھ سے کریں یا الہی جو دعا نیک ہم تجھ سے کریں خدسیوں کے لب سے آمیرا بنا کا ساتھ ہو ربنا یا ربنا ربنا یا ربنا ربنا یا ربنا ربنا یا ربنا یا الہی جب رضا خوابے گرا سے سر اٹھا یا الہی جب رضا خوابے گرا سے سر اٹھا رولت بیدار عشق مصطفیٰ کا ساتھ ربنا یا ربنا 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 الحمدللہ We should turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with abundance of istighfar, tawbah, and uh, determination that inshallah, azza wa jalla, we are never going to commit those sins ever again. Sincere tawbah is the prerequisite and condition of acceptance of tawbah, dear viewers, that we have regret in the heart, we have remorse in the heart for committing a sin, a sin is identified, and a pure intention that's made never ever to dare to commit that sin again. When a person is firm on his, on his intentions, Allah Azza wa Jalla will make his foothold firm 
on his niyat, inshallah, subhanallah. However, our niyat right now is, of course, uh, discussing this topic, Mulana Sahib, which is a very important discussion, and that is to, uh, that is, of course, bringing about an Islamic and Sunnah-inspiring Islamic environment in one's home, right? Now, this Sunnah-inspiring environment, of course, is found when parents are, of course, completely adhering to the Sunnah of the beloved Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in any society, in any environment, in any part of the world, whether it is South Africa or any other country, look at the city, the town, locality, in every area, Mawana Sahib. It's important that as Muslims, in our families, those who are under our supervision as parents, we firstly inculcate the sunnah of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We teach our children about the sunnahs of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about Islam, what Islam requires and wants from our children. Of course, we do acknowledge, we do know it's a time of internet, it is a time of dramas and television and movies. It is a time of these various series that are there that people would spend entire nights watching them without falling asleep. And uh, this is where most of the youth is dwelling in this day and age. And this is a huge gap and change between both the situations. Mm -hmm. But yet our struggle and our, our, our needs and intention on a daily basis as parents out there is that I still want to inculcate or introduce the Islamic environment in my home. Yes. Knowing that I'm unable to follow 100%, but still the try and the koshish is there, which is a very good thing. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. But uh, on the other hand, Mulama Sahib, you know, time has come where uh, the truth, of course, has to be brought to the forefront. And truth always prevails. It will. It has to, right? But how can we change the situation in our environments at home? The daughters, the sons, the children who are so immune to watching their cartoons, watching TV, surfing the internet for hours and hours and hours, not getting their homework done, not respecting their parents, so on and so forth. And we are discussing a very important discussion, of yes. course. This is a very important topic for today, and that is the environment, Islamic environment into our homes. How can Mawana Sabi, inshallah, educate us on this subject? Sayyidi, as parents, right, alhamdulillah, I'm a parent, you are a parent, alhamdulillah, to our children. And uh, we can say things from experience now because we are in that position, alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us, mashallah. And see, with, the, with this blessing comes a lot of responsibility. And as we are responsible to follow uh, into the footsteps of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his sunnah, his seerah, and so should our children also be inclined that way. But then what happens if the parents themselves are not really uh, practicing the sunnah, but they want the children to now all of a sudden uh, become sunnah obedient or sunnah oriented? Uh, that's where the, the difficulty comes in. Like uh, as parents, right? for example, if I'm as a parent, I want the best for my children, right? So if I maybe work for a certain company, doing a very entry level job, I would, I would want my child to be the CEO of that company. Mm -hmm. So meaning we have the best interests uh, in, in our hearts for them. So if we are not following Sunnah, we, we say we find it's fine as long as you know, I, I want my children to progress and follow the Sunnah. How is that going to happen? Because the children, they look up to the father whoever is the head of the family, they look up to them. Yes, and if the head of the family is going in the wrong direction, they're going to follow in that direction. Because, So to them, to our children in the family, or those who are, alhamdulillah, in our care, they look up to us. We are in that position to them. And if we are going wayward, how can we expect them now to suddenly follow the sunnah, uh, the, the culture of the sunnah and the sunnah environment is very difficult. So whether we like it or not, we need to change ourselves. The change uh, must come from us. And inshallah, if we change, and then after that, yes, we can tell them, if we uh, read Bismillah, uh, every time we read Bismillah softly, what if uh, once we read Bismillah loudly before we uh, start to eat the food? That means we're following the Sunnah, at the same time we're making them aware that, you know what, this is the Sunnah, you should also do it. So that should send a reminder without making anyone feel awkward on the table. And then maybe if, we, if one of us could take the responsibility that, you know what, uh, before every, everyone sit, sits down there, 
make sure everything is there. And then when we start, we remind one another. Let's uh, uh, listen to the virtues of re reciting Bismillah or the dua before eating. Let's say, for example, dua after eating, after we finish food, we're going to finish the food together. Not that one person finish the food and then walk out of the table. It, it's rude. So the sunnah way is wait for everyone to finish and, and then, you know, get up together. If we sat together, we should get up together. So Alhamdulillah, uh, like the saying goes, a family that uh, eats together stays together. Mm. So yes, uh, we should inculcate that. And, and this doesn't stop at eating and feeding and drinking. But every facet of, of our lives, like say, for example, we wake up in the morning. And uh, as soon as we wake up, uh, we should say the dua loudly. Alhamdulillahilladhi. We read this dua, alhamdulillah, sunnah dua, masnoon dua, mashallah, this is another sunnah. And in that way, we are making others aware that yes, we are being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us life again after uh, uh, making us go through this, this spell of sleep that we have had where we didn't even know where we were, which dreams we, we, we saw. And, and uh, suddenly, out of a sudden, then, then we have been given life back. And therefore, we should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are many who don't even wake up uh, to see the next morning. Alhamdulillah, we have been fortunate to, to see the next morning, to see the sun rising again, alhamdulillah. And then after that, we can um, support each other, maybe a support structure to wake up for Fajr, if not for Tahajjud, at least for Fajr before Fajr to wake up and make sure that everyone is up at home and uh, one person can take the responsibility. So and whose once responsibility they get, they should be more so? The person who's the head of the family. Because, Subhanallah. So because being the head, I mean, everybody, we all enjoy our positions. But when it comes to responsibilities, we want to run away. So you can't have both. Right? Okay, the, I'm the head of the family, I'm the father or I'm the breadwinner. And uh, whatever I say goes, right? Because I'm enjoying the perks of it, right? But it comes with the responsibilities. Anybody gets sick in the family, it's your responsibility to uh, make arrangements for the hospital. It's your responsibility to go buy groceries on time, make sure uh, that, that the food items are there at home. So all of that becomes uh, the, the, the head of the family's responsibility. So every position is there with responsibility. The higher the position you have, the more responsibilities you have. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is uh, no such thing as running away from it. And the sunnah uh, environment of our homes, this should be the core responsibilities of the head of the family. That you know what, as a head of the family, uh, as it is that whatever I say goes, so I say what is sunnah. <laughs> Subhanallah. So that becomes everyone's uh, go-to way, you know, to, to follow the sunnah naturally. Inshallah. Mashallah. No, I, I completely agree with Mulana Sahib. And together with that, the fact that uh, there are many challenging situations out there for many parents that sometimes uh, a mother could be playing the, the role of a father and mother together, you know, a single yes. parent. Uh, and vice versa, there are many, many, many people out there and due to them going astray or becoming spoiled or contaminated with other friendships, you know, that's very uh, detrimental to one's iman and health. There are people who have actually fell off the fence, Mulana Sahib. And to such an extent that uh, due to the company, they are gone on the other side. The sunnah of the beard is gone from their faces. Due to company, it impacts their salah, their ibadat. Due to evil company, they become disrespectful and disobedient towards their parents. There are many situations out there that from a pious child, they became rotten children. To such an extent that parents cannot even stand the sight of such an old heart. Mm -hmm. And they make dua that this child should just go away from here. They come complaining. There are many situations like that. So for a good environment in our homes, dear viewers of Madani Channel, as Mulana Sahib has mentioned, that this can never be the responsibility of the child to know their responsibilities until they are taught, they are told, they are explained. And together with that, you support them in that mission. Yes. Parents got to walk that path. You cannot just command and say, read your salah. But the father is watching his favorite match, for example. A parent cannot command the daughter to perform the wudu and, and perform her salah and be good when she herself is unable to do it or she doesn't perform her salah at all. So yes. we're going to be practicing Muslims. And this is the order of the Holy Quran. Ya ladina amanu dhulu fi silmi kafa. The Holy Quran advises us and orders us What is the summary of this ayah? 
وتعاونوا على البر والتقوى that we should be helpful in regards to righteousness and in taqwa we should help one another we should help each another we should aid one another in which way dear viewers aiding and helping and assisting in righteousness and in piety so it is this piety and righteous environment which will bring about a beautiful peaceful uh, environment in our homes but if the peace today is ruined in our homes, if there's no respect there, there's no other there, there, no one knows how to eat peacefully. If there's a meal together, there's an argument on the table. The son does not know how to greet the father properly. The father does not know how to look into the eye of the son properly. They can't see eye to eye. There's bitterness surfacing right above, um, you know, in this relationship. All of this, Mulana Sahib, is due to the one result. And the one thing is that when the child was born, we did not give them Islamic values. We have taught our children alphabets of our languages, our, our local languages. We have taught our children alphabets, but we have not taught them Alif Ba Ta Ta. We have not taught them how to recite the Holy Quran. We have educated our children about secular customs and values, but we have not taught our children the sunnahs of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have lectured to them hours and hours. Oh my son, make sure you become like this and you become like that because without this knowledge, you can't earn good salary. You can't buy a good home. You can't do this. You can't do that. But have we taught our children to love the sunnahs of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have taught them how to love paisa and love money. But have we taught them how to love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how to fall in love with his sunnahs? These are some questions, dear viewers of Madani channel, which we should be asking our children every single day. From their childhood, Mahasa, we have taught them how to say, hello, how are you? Say hi in return. Say hello in return. Have we ever taught them, nay, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh proper pronunciation, proper andaz. So it all stems from the, from the rock bottom. And the, 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 the roots of everything, Mulana Sahib, as the, the first madrasa for any child is the lap of his mother. And if we as parents did not go in that direction, it's very, very difficult to bring about an Islamic environment. However, let's talk about the positive parts, Mulana Sahib. Inshallah, yeah. Azza it's now time for us to learn, okay, we might have it, we might not have it. We might have it in medium. We might have it that sometimes children listen to us and sometimes they do not listen to us. It's vice versa, right? In this situation, inshallah, Azza first, let's follow the sunnah tariqah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And the truth of the matter is that, Mulana Sahib, the first thing is that we all should become namazis in our homes. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has spoken about not making your home like a graveyard. So if our Islamic sisters, our children, our brothers who would not perform nawafil salah in their homes after their faraid in the masajid, if for some reason, let's start reading and making ibadah in our homes. Let's not make our home viran and away from blessings and barakah. Subhanallah, there are so many things that you could do in your home. You know, zikrullah, yes. fikr of Madinatul Munawwara, performing salahs, reciting the quran e Park, or else the evil jinns and shayateen will invade our homes. What is your point on this matter, Mulana Sahib? If we really make our home viran, as Mulana is saying, like for example, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say in his Mubarak Hadith, that uh, do not turn your homes into graveyards. Meaning, we perform salah in the masjid, yes. But sometimes uh, we could also perform nafal salah at home. You should also learn to perform ibadah at home, make zikr at home. You don't have to only go to the masjid, you know, to, to make ibadah. You can make ibadah at home and make your home lively. Subhanallah, with the zikr of Allah, uh, with the recitation of the Holy Quran. Uh, alhamdulillah, uh, this, these are the virtues and these are the ethos that will really make a home a home, truly a home, subhanAllah. And as Muasab said that uh, before uh, we teach them the language of the world, why not teach them the language of Jannah, subhanAllah, which is Arabic, alhamdulillah. Um, people ask me, why don't you teach, uh, teach your child Urdu? I said, no, I'm still trying to teach him Arabic. I said, why Arabic? I said, because this is the language of Jannah, subhanAllah. This is the language of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa So yes, there are so many reasons to um, learn this language, mashallah. Yes, you need to learn your local la language in order to communicate with people, to do your official paperwork and so on and so forth, and to pursue your, your uh, academic studies and so on. Yes, nobody is stopping you from that. But on the, uh, on the other hand, we shouldn't be losing the focus of, of our Islamic learning. 
Mashallah. There's no such thing that you can't have both. You can have both. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. You can have the, the worldly and the secular education and you can have Islamic education. Yes, the choice is yours. But um, if you're going to think that, you know, if, you, if I'm going to do our, my Islamic learning, the other thing will get left out. There's no such thing. Because once you uh, start to learn about Islam, it will motivate you to excel in other fa uh, faculties of life. Subhanallah. Mashallah. Other Mashallah. faculties of sciences that are there, whether it's algebra that you are learning, whether it's maths, you know, any other uh, subjects of maths you're learning, uh, you're learning physics, it will help you and aid you in all of that. Subhanallah, so this Subhanallah. this barakah, alhamdulillah, don't look at it as you know a distraction, but look at it as a as a means, as a source of barakah that will, uh, inshallah, put everything else in your life on steroids. Amin, Allahumma amin. Subhanallah. May Allah Kareem make it such that we are able to uh, overcome these situations, Mulana Sahib. As you were talking about that, I'm just thinking, you know, uh, in South Africa, uh, there are situations here where people want their homes to be recognized. Ki ye musalman ka ghar hai. usko musalman ka ghar Sabit karne ke liye, many a times to prove that this is a Muslim home and a Muslim resides here. We want to make this known. We want people to know that we are Muslims. So what do we That sometimes brothers will put some sort of flags in their homes, right? And there's a specific name then given. Of course, these are the flags which will identify that this home belongs to a Muslim home. It's, it's all in the heart and in the mind, mashallah, that uh, you, know, you want people to respect or understand that this is how Muslims live. But many a times it's, it's shameful to see or to learn that um, even without any signs in the yard or on the other house, sometimes people will re recite or will write some ayat of the Quran on the door, on the windows, sometimes on the gate. And this is only to identify that this is a Muslim home. But together with that, when such homes who have signages around their home that's identified as a Muslim home, but from inside swearing words are emanated, or heard on the public platforms, on the roads. Music is heard blasted at times. Fights and arguments are heard where neighbors three doors and four doors away are unknown or they are aware of what's happening in your home due to the arguments, quarrels and fights. So environment, Islamic environment, Mahasab here, refers to the Quranic recitation that neighbors used to hear us fighting, but which neighbor has heard us recite the Quran in Park loudly? Subhanallah. Kya Quran in If they also would hear the Quranic recitation, maybe the words will have an effect on their hearts and they will come closer to Islam. If they are Muslims, they will make Tawbah and become better Muslims. If you look at the lives of our pious predecessors, Muhasab, they will be reciting and reading namaz and performing nawafil namaz on the rooftop of their homes. Some awliyas and some pious predecessors never left any corner in their home where they never read salah. Har kamre mein, har room mein, har jage mein. And what advice they would give their children and what nasiha they would give is just 800 saal guzar chuke hain, 700 saal guzar chuke hain, hazaro hazaro saal guzar chuke hain. But see how history has kept alive their stories. Simple stories, but even today, the Muslims of today read the stories of the people of the past and we gain enthusiasm and jazba ki hum bhi esa karna chahte hain. Why, dear viewers of Madani channel, this environment of the home will make your qabr a better environment, inshallah. The environment in your home will determine the environment to be in your grave, whether that will be good or bad. And if the environment in your qabr will be good, then it can be understood from there that the outcome in the akhirah will be better in your favor, inshallah. Because the qabr is the first stepping stone to the hereafter. If things, mu'amalat and halat are well in the qabr, it can be hoped that your situation will be better in the akhirah. But from our home it stems and we can see that there's hatred, there's hasad. Before the situations used to be such that one parent will have their 10 children sitting around and having lunch, breakfast, supper together. And times have come now that when those parents become old, those same 10 children can't keep the two parents together. Allah. and have one good meal together and make the shukr of Allah so let's go towards learning more. So this is where I was coming from and this is what I want to basically advise the viewers of Madani channel that do we identify the quarrels we have in our home and why we have because quarrels and fights is not an Islamic environment we are talking about Islamic environment in our homes do we have fights and quarrels as the husband comes from work and there is a fight that erupts without no tail, no head, no reason mm -hmm. and or either he's fussed up and pulled up and there's a fight between husband and wife. Now this causes lots of destruction to the peaceful environment where children are growing. The first yes. thing to ruin an Islamic environment is argumentation and fights. 
especially if those fights are fueled with vulgarism and they emanate from the tongue with such insulting words which even is disgusting to even mention or even to think like that. So this is the first thing that will ruin the peace in one's family, in one's personal home. And whatever virtuous deeds you have done for the day or for the week, this will have a bigger impact on the heart than what good you have done. Because people will normally remember the bad more than the good that you do. It's like that. So what can be done to remove this type of quarrels? Actually, there is no such thing that, you know, something can't be resolved with a mutual and respectful civil discussion. Subhanallah. And communication. Right. And if there is an issue, it needs to be addressed. And there is no need to argue about it because both the parties are adult. And uh, we understand. It's not like we speak foreign languages to each other. We speak the same language. Sometimes, yes, we may not be on the same page. But um, realistically speaking, uh, if communication is good and uh, there is reciprocity there between the two, then inshallah, the environment at home can become, uh, alhamdulillah, the, the sunnah environment. But if there is madani mahol, yes, subhanallah, madani mahol. But if there is toxicity there, then if there is a person who's always bringing negativity, because Islam doesn't uh, promote negative thinking or negative right. mindset. Right. There's not an Islamic thinking. Mm. So if there is a person who brings negativity at home, and you can talk about it and tell them, you know what, there is a time and place for everything. Right now we're at home. You know, enjoy the peace, mashallah, because why do we call it even home if there is no peace? Mm. Why would you call home a home when there is no peace, peace in it? And then if you really can't get along with each other, then inshallah, what, what's the best we could do? I mean, we finish say what we wanted to say and we finish uh, give the Islamic advice that is there. So what is a person supposed to do other than communicate about it or discuss the matter? Because we're both adults. You cannot force somebody onto the other person because they are two different individuals and it's a free world. So what do you do in a situation like that? Then inshallah, that's when our uh, plea in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very important. Firstly, to have sabr. The other person is not understanding your viewpoint. No, no problem because uh, if that person is not an extension of yourself, you may be right, but uh, it can wait. Exactly. If the other person is not getting your point, no problem. Make sabr. And maybe you can learn to accept as the person is. And that way, you're not going to get irritated every time. And then uh, at the same time, you can make dua of Allah. Please put some sense into that person's mind and, and change their heart or whatever it could be that you, uh, you, you are really willing and, and wishing for. And if it's something positive, inshallah, uh, it should come right. And if it doesn't, then Allah knows best because uh, all our situations are different. And how we deal with the situation, therein lies the, the, the wisdom that um, if there is a situation, we got a situation, there is a quarrel and there's a fight at home or at workplace, wherever. There's two ways to go about it. Either blow it out of proportion or keep calm and uh, discuss it in a civil manner. The way nobody gets hurt and the matter is resolved. The, the latter is closer to the sunnah of Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. Very good solutions, Mulana Sahib. And we hope that we can make amal upon them and uh, bring about such an environment in the home where it causes the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to descend upon us. But our environments have become so toxic, as you have mentioned. There is no respect whatsoever. And for all of this to come once again back into our lives, dear viewers, as parents, the bottom line is that we need to rectify ourselves. We need to reform ourselves first as parents. Yes, we may feel I'm giving my son the best car to drive. I'm giving him such a lavish home to live in. Every food is found for him, money in his pocket. Let's rectify and let's reform their character. And before we go there, we as parents need to know how to approach the matter because we are dealing with a different generation altogether. Yes. Generation of technology, the, the generation which is beyond what you ever imagined. And these are from amongst the signs of Qiyamah. But if we instill in them values, Islamic values, adab, 
sunnas of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If we soften their hearts using the lives and examples of the pious predecessors, most definitely it will impact their hearts. It will make a change to them. But unfortunately, we have hardened their hearts with the sinful cartoons and sinful, uh, sinful um, pictures and videos and, 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 and movies and dramas, which has already penetrated the hearts and mind and the, and, and the sukoon of the children. All their ideas and all their talks and their ways of life is taken from those places. Their role models are not the Sahaba anymore, but rather it is the cartoon characters. And this is what's happening, dear viewers of Madani Channel. They know less about the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they know more about which character is this and which character is that and so on and so forth. So when the information is less, how will they make niyat to practice? So equip them with Islamic knowledge, educate them, teach them and show them more importance in secular education. We are almost so concerned that we even set alarms for that examination when you come to school like examination. If you will not wake up, you will be into problem. But have you ever set an alarm for him because he's writing madrasa exams? Any importance was given? No. When have we done this? When do we do this? So he spends many hours in school and just one hour in madrasa. You want him to become a doctor and engineer in those from 8 o'clock in the morning till 2.30, for example, in South Africa. This is the timing for the school. But in school, after 4-5 hours, or 6 hours, when he's fatigued and tired, that's the time now he's going to go to the madrasa, and that too, he goes in late, and that too, for one and a half hour, two hours, what would he learn? And even if he comes back with something that he has learned, when he comes back home to freshen up and has his supper, the very same child is now found opening the school books before the madrasa one. I have to complete my homework. Yeah. And this is the norm in the country. This is how it goes everywhere. And the child is now punished and he is now getting shouting for not doing his home school homework. And the mother is tied now to even shout him a little more than that when it comes to the madrasa part of it. Is his recitation correct? Is his tajweed correct? Is the ustad, the way the ustad has taught him is how he needs to present his sabak. But has mm. the mother and father motivated him and tested him and, and involved themselves equally as he's involved? The thing is that it starts with the interest. So Islamic environment firstly comes when we become better Muslims, when we become more stable Muslims, more following Muslims, rather Mulana Sahib, should I say. Mm -hmm. And inshallah, Zawajallah, this problem is not difficult for us to remove and eradicate. It can be sorted and resolved, providing that we give our full attention to this dear viewers of Madani channel. For far too long, we as parents have been blaming one another. It was your responsibility. The wife will say it was the husband's responsibility. <laughs> and now at the age of 10, he is tired of hearing whose problem and whose fault it was. He is already joining the wrong company. He already has friends. He already has plans. And 95% of the time, we don't even know the plans of our children, where they plan to go. They say something and something else is done. So this environment can never be created with such toxic problems and, and, and situations that are surrounding our peaceful environments. The only peaceful environment every human has is his home, Mulana Sahib. Yes. He looks forward going to his home. You don't see any way else written except for your house, home sweet home, right? Because we look forward going to our home. And this sweet environment is only on the books left. That we say in the words, we say in the words, home sweet home. But after going there, we know that everything is done. There is nothing sweet there. Because there are fights, 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 issues. So there are some issues. If we will not resolve this problem, dear viewers of Madhini channel, we have furthermore bigger issues coming on our plate. Allahu Akbar. When they shall become parents, Mulan Sahib, those same children, when they become yes. parents. And if they grew up um, watching all of this, the, the, the Oprah in the house. Allah. So Allah. yes, Allah. Uh, they, this is what they're going to carry forward. Okay. And uh, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And uh, it's a, like a generational damage. Okay. You know, we're not uh, ruining this generation, but the coming generation as well. Because whatever they see, okay, this is what um, uh, maybe a, a couple's life is like, you know. So when they get married, okay, this is the same thing what we do. Uh, uh, Abba and, uh, you know, and mom used to do. So we're not doing anything different. We're not doing anything unusual. This is maybe normal. So before negativity and the toxicity becomes like a norm in our lives, Allah. in our children's lives, it may be um, because we're dealing with it, we don't want them to deal with it as well. So if there is a negativity, yes, 
you can sort it out, wait for the children to go to school or whatever. Then you can sit down and discuss the matter like two adults and, and resolve it. And it, it doesn't have to go through their ears, right? Whatever problem you two are having. You can sort it out between the two of you. Don't involve the children who weren't partisan or who didn't create these problems, right? So in that way, we are not like really affecting them or, or causing them uh, to, to take this negative vibe. Because if there is a negativity at home, also, even if you don't say anything, you can feel it. it in, it's in the atmosphere. Like a person who just comes in, you can feel that vibe that is there. And that is very bad. For everyone, not only for the person who's negative, but for all those that are around them. You know, as you say, the one fish in the pond can make the whole pond dirty. So, Allahu yes, Allahu uh, same Allahu. same goes for our spiritual environment, the spiritual peace and harmony that is at home. It gets disturbed if there is even a little bit of negativity. Uh, there is, Alhamdulillah. I mean, nowadays there are arts. You know, feng shui art and this art and that art that I introduced to bring peace and harmony uh, at home. Uh, but the people who are living there, they're the same people. <laughs> Nothing changed about them. How the house is going to make itself just peaceful, right? If the residence there, the home becomes home because of the residence of the home. Otherwise, it's just, just a house. So let's talk about, mashallah, bringing about the same peaceful harmony once again. Yes. Another way to do that, if, if the sunnah of the Prophet is followed, yes. from amongst the sunnahs, one sunnah is to eat together. And eating is something very important. We all do that on a daily basis. Breakfast, lunch, supper, and some will have more or some will have less. However, eating together is such a beautiful act here, viewers of Madani Channel. What a wonderful sunnah. Uh, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Uh, in fact, Muna Sahib, eating with the jama'ah, eating in the congregation, eating with the family brings about more barakah in the sustenance itself. But uh, today we see no blessings and barakah. And you spoke mm -hmm. about this in the very beginning. And I'm just highlighting once again upon this this particular point is because uh, we have heard or you do see or you do experience when you go to some places where uh, the children are called over and again, come eat your food, come have your food, come consume your food. And the food could be waiting for the banda, but the person is busy doing his own things. Sometimes we say, you continue eating, recite Bismillah rahman rahim and eat, I'm joining you now. And it so happens that we did not find the time. So when it's time to eat, we all should work around our ways and situations and see how can we get ourselves to the table spread yes. where the entire family sits with adab and respect respecting the food without wasting the food with this near that this is the sunnah of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You as a family, you in your family will see blessings in the food firstly. This complaint of us saying the food doesn't last, doesn't suffice the family, the groceries are gone so expensive, this and that. All of those complaints will come to an end the moment you start eating with your family in jamaat, yani with the congregation of the family, all the children, everybody should be there together and teach the other when the father starts eating the meal first. I've been to some homes, Masab, where the sons will not eat first till their father do not put a lukma in their mouth, a muslim in their mouth. And they have gone big over in their 15 or 20 years of age. I have seen this and they said, this is not because we are spoiled, it's because of respect. We would not eat anything until our parents do not put the first muscle in their mouth. And this brought such happiness to my heart to see that, wow, there are people that exist like this as well. MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. Any other point, Masa, besides eating together, we discussed namaz in the house, we discussed, discussed quran e in the house. And um, there are many other points, uh, of course, inshaAllah, if we put together, maybe Masa can mention about salam because I, I, I have seen lack of giving and receiving salam in the homes of people. Uh, yes, uh, first of all, um, it may be a little awkward in the beginning. Mm because you are seeing each other every day and then you're making salam every time you see them. Yes, but uh, we have to break the ice. I mean, we don't feel uh, shy when we do things that we are not proud of mm. within our homes. So this is, alhamdulillah, this is the greeting of Islam. There's no uh, need to feel awkward about it. You came home, assalamu alaikum. And you enter home, mashallah. And it is, as it is a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, to make salam to others. And he would be the first one to make salam. And uh, when he went to Madina Munawwara, uh, the first uh, message that he gave people is Afshu Salam. One of the first uh, teachings well, is spread salam. So spread salam, uh, I take it as, you know, spread love. <laughs> Subhanallah. Salam is peace, mashallah. And this is a beautiful name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As-salam. And... Um, 
when we are making salam to someone, we're not only greeting, but we are also making the zikr of Allah. This can also be our intention. So when we are making salam to one another, yeah, well. then that also is in our mind that this is the beautiful name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the 99 names that is mentioned in the Holy Quran. So we are at the same time making the zikr of Allah. So one virtuous deeds can have so many benefits. And the person who makes salam, obviously, because he is the first one who he is to initiate it, mm. he gets more reward. Yeah, well. And as we, we all should be greedy for reward, right? I mean, we're greedy for, for the worldly wealth. Why, are not we, why aren't we greedy for the wealth of the hereafter? Because this world is temporary and we know it. We, we know it. Like it's, it's so obvious. We see the janazas leaving every day. Yet we know also that uh, the house in the hereafter, that is permanent. That is our permanent yeah. abode. So why are we so concerned and so greedy about this world, but we are totally neglectful? Oh, Salam, you get so many virtues by making Salam. All right. But if you had had that opportunity that I'm going to get so much of, uh, you know, currency, cashback, mm. you know, when I, when I do this, which way would we lean? Allah. So that shows our priority. So if we are inclined towards the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we become more spiritually uplifted and the Akhirah and the, and the concerns for the Akhirah, it only grows. And there comes a time when it surpasses that of our worries about the world. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumullahu khaira Mulana Sahib for this amazing Madani Pulse. Um, Allah Kareem Hamid Amal Ki Tawfiq Ata for Amai Mulana Sahib. Um, so that we could practice these Madani pearls and bring about more peace and harmony. Those who have peace need more peace. Those who don't have peace require lots of peace and harmony. And this type of environment where uh, it's just every time you enter your home, you really feel the tranquility and happiness in your heart. And Shaitan will try his level best to ruin that peace, but you try working towards bringing about that environment in your homes, dear viewers of Madani channel. No matter how huge and how many bedrooms you have, this doesn't make your house great. What makes your house great is when you hear the adhan or when adhan is given in your home, when dhikrullah is recited and made, tilawat e quran Park is recited in your home, angels enter your home, Allahu Akbar, this will make the environment even more better. Medina, Medina. So let's make amal, let's practice, let's make tawbah, let's work towards this initiative. May Allah Kareem answer and fulfill all our lawful wishes. Ameen. Ameen. Bijahin Nabiyyil Ameen. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I keep reciting the Rudi Park. And we have some other beautiful programs only on your Madani channel. Keep watching and sharing them only for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until next time, stay good, be good, do good. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Treasures of wisdom, treasures of wisdom.